Good evening. I'm Virginia Amos, and it's Wednesday, March 12th, and we are three nights into our nine-part series of one-on-one -on -one interviews with all of the city council and mayoral candidates who are running in the June primary. Now, the the Zebra Press and Zeev TV do not endorse uh, anyone, but rather present this as a public service. We're going to go for about 30 minutes. I ask the same questions of everybody. And if we have time at the end, we will take questions from our viewing audience. And because I don't have our intern here tonight, the wonderful Eli, I have my trusty egg timer. Sometimes I forget to use it, so bear with us. So, I'm uh, happy to welcome John Chapman. It's really nice to have you here. Now, you were the first incumbent we've had. Oh, okay. Everyone else has been a newbie, as it were. Um, so, before we get into the uh, meat of the matter, okay. I'm going to ask you a few questions, kind of quick fire, to okay. just get us started. And I actually already know that the answer to this one, and I think most people do, but how long have you lived in Alexandria? <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, my entire life. Exactly. Um, yeah, I'm a fourth generation Alexandrian, um, and so, uh, yeah, this, this city, the only time I have been away from the city um, for an extended period is for college. I went out to college in Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota's quite cold compared yeah. to Virginia, and so I came right back. <laughs> I bet you did. <laughs> I did. I bet you did. Um, what three words best describe you? <laughs> so um, I would say the first one, because uh, I, I did see your question to other candidates. I would say the first word is a townie. Um, is it, what? Is a townie. Um, a townie, okay. Because I, I love this city. I know it like the back of my hand um, and uh, have a, a strong bias for Alexandria. Um, okay. I know friends from D.C. and uh, in Maryland and, and other parts of Virginia, and we'll compare notes about, you know, what's the, the best restaurant. Um, they'll say some random restaurant in D.C. I'll be like, well, no, we've no. got an Alexander restaurant that's better than that. Um, I find um, a lot of peace and comfort just in the different places here in the city um, that I don't necessarily find in other parts of the region. Okay. And so I would say that's one. Um, I would say uh, I try to be thoughtful. Um, growing up, my mom really emphasized uh, to me um, the fact that I need to be able to understand and see other people's perspectives. Um, and so whenever I look at issues or, or talk to people, I try to be thoughtful about how I, mm, how I mm -hmm. in interact with people or you know, try not to judge people for having uh, the feelings that they do and, and, and um, verbalizing that uh, many times the way they do. Um, and so thoughtful will be another one. Um, and I say for the last one, um, you know, I, I tend to be uh, gregarious. Um, uh, you know, I try to try to make friends wherever I can. Um, I think, you know, my, my motto is we get one shot at life. And so mm -hmm. why, why, well, why not try to meet and get to know everybody in it? Because um, yeah. all of us are... Uh, on that same type of uh, journey where we get one shot and, you know, why not? There it is. Yeah, why not be friends with people? Okay. Right? All right. Since you've right. See, heard these questions, I'm going to change it up a little <laughs> okay, bit. Okay, good. So, do you have pets? Uh, I do. Um, I, I'm, I guess I'm married into a pet. Oh, um, well, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. My uh, husband did that. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Jet. Um, Jet is a small black, um, now I'm going to forget, a uh Poodle Terrier mix. Oh, we yeah. like that. Uh, and so he is full of energy mm -hmm. um, and does not let any person get to the door without uh, making himself known. Uh, and so, um, yeah, my wife had him uh, while we were dating. She got him, and uh, he's become uh, the, the oldest brother to our, our new son. So Okay, great. Yeah. And what kind of music makes you get up on the dance floor? Oh, um you know, I'd say, you know, 70s soul. Um, I'd go I for love, 60s. I love but... hip-hop, but 70s soul and, yeah. and some of um, some of that. Also, um, Michael Jackson. Anything from, like, early young Michael okay. Jackson. Oh, I'm there. Okay. Yeah. I got you. I like that. Okay. Um, so the, qu the first question for you is a little bit different, and that is okay. because you are an incumbent. Mm -hmm. how, has, how has your experience 
on city council been mm -hmm. and why a second term so i'm i'm now pushing third for fourth fourth oh yeah, goodness yeah, excuse yeah. me I'm a, I'm a old... so you do like city council okay <laughs> I, do. I do um and, and for the first couple of terms it was really a, a learning experience even for somebody that's grown up in the town mm -hmm. knowing knowing people in the town um you kind of get to get to step behind the curtain and see how mm. things work why things are the way they are and and what the possibilities could be um what are some of the decision points um and um, some of the hurdles that we face as a city. Um, and so for somebody who's grown up in the city, it was, it, you know, it's been very exciting for me just to continue to to learn more and more about the city and the people in it and the change uh, that's happening here. Because uh, as you you know, this place has changed dramatically over the last several decades. Mm -hmm. um, we're not the small, sleepy railroad town uh, that we were, um, you know, decades ago. Um, and what does that change meant for those who have lived here uh, and grown up here? What does that change meant for those who are just coming here uh, and breathing life into what they believe is Alexandria? Um, and so for me, um, council has been extremely fulfilling, um, you know, working on issues large and small that, that not only matter to me, but also matter to uh, other residents. Um, and, and so, you know, I've tried to, over the last couple of terms, try to take a bigger look at some of the bigger issues. Um, you know, housing, housing affordability has, uh, is a mm. challenge and continues to be a challenge, as you know, as a realtor, throughout yeah. the region. Um, it's not something that we can uh, throw little things at and expect it to change here. Mm -hmm. We really have to set a goal and be creative about how we address that goal uh, and understand what the pros and cons to doing all of that are. Uh, and so I've tried to take that on as a as a big challenge, um, supporting our school system. Um, you know, growing up, I saw folks that um, graduated from TC, but I also knew folks that didn't. Uh, and so trying to figure out how, as a council member, I can continue to support the the education, the learning, uh, the family supports uh, outside the school uh, to make more and more of our kids be able to graduate and then. And frankly, come back and live in our community. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what it takes to live here. And so I think we need to be preparing our kids to be able to do that, too. Um, yeah. So four terms. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Thank you. I Because I know it is not always, it, it is sometimes a thankless endeavor. I, You know. It, from the outside, I would say. Yeah. No, I would say, you know, it's. Um, of course, you, you have your, your folks that don't agree with you, um, but I think, by and large, most Alexandrians um, understand the sacrifice, right? Um, you don't get to spend as much time with your, your family. Now I have a young son. I don't get to, um, I wouldn't, in a kind of normal year, see him as mm -hmm. much. Um, and, um, you know, some folks, uh, their career their real career kind of slows because they're trying to juggle multiple things. Um, and I think most folks uh, respect um, the commitment that most council members have. Yeah. All right. So, um, and I honestly don't know the answer to this. I don't mm -hmm. know how you voted on the Seminary Road Project. Oh, okay. Um, so I voted, uh, I was one of the uh, three that voted against it. Okay. Um, I have... Um, lived in that part of the city uh, for, for decades uh, and have traveled um, Seminary Road countless times. Um, and I did not believe that the, the final version uh, of what we went forward with was um, the best one. I think there, uh, there were some other um, op options brought forward uh, by staff that uh, increased the safety of the road mm -hmm. but kept capacity. Uh, I live on West Taylor Run, and that's one of the biggest oh, cut, okay. throughs, yeah. cut throughs in the city. And so uh, that, you know, as you know, um, that kind of colors um, my perspective on central city um, traffic. Um, in fact, I was um, glad to work with staff to put together a task force to really start to look at our traffic and congestion issues in the area. Um, and it's really, really matters to me that we keep capacity in some of these east-west um, uh, streets. Uh, and so looking at capacity, looking at how then we layer in safety um, and opportunity for multimodal users um, is, is key uh, in that decision. But I think, you know, uh, until we have that 
kind of fuller conversation in the community about capacity and what the future capacity is going to need. Mm-hmm. Um, we can't make um, uh, some of the, the more uh, permanent changes to, to road infrastructure that we, um, we, we might be making um, with something like seminary. Um, I think there's just more conversation about the direction and the vision okay. uh, that we need to have. Well, considering that you didn't vote for it mm-hmm. and that it has become one of the really huge issues mm-hmm. of this campaign, it seems that there are three possibilities going mm-hmm. forward. You can spend a lot of money and reverse it completely. Mm-hmm. You can leave it as it is. Mm-hmm. Or three, you can make modifications. Yeah. So that's that's one. And, and uh, you know, something you said um, kind of is, is interesting. You know, it's interesting to, to knock on doors and, and many of the different neighborhoods um, and, and talk about people's kind of core issues. Um, and I've been doing that over the last few months. And honestly, outside of kind of the Central Alexandria, seminary is not the the kind of big thing that people are discussing. I think, you know, what seminary plays into is what is the process um, mm-hmm. the city's going to go about doing outreach, yeah. getting feedback, um, and then making a decision based on the data, but also interworking um, how the residents feel, how the taxpayers feel, um, and um, how does that work together? Um, and sometimes we do that well. Sometimes we don't do that as well as we should. Uh, and I think, you know, what folks want to truly on both sides of the issue, what folks want to see is that, you know, the process for making some of these decisions is um, a little bit more um, kind of thought out and tied to data and tied to okay. some of the things that people feel. But um, to your question, um, you know, I've, I've said at the last debate that I would um, wouldn't have a problem in, in paying for it. Um, that's my personal decision. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do respect how um, what my personal decision is, given given my bias um, and understanding what it means to govern. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. because again, after we've made the the four three decision, you know, I still have to govern. I still have to work with people. Right. We still have to have outreach um, and uh, ensure people that what we're trying to do here uh, is for the best of the community. Um, so I, I would say, and I say that um, because um, I do think that more conversation around some of the impacts to um, closing, you know, uh, closing down some lanes within our east-west um, thoroughfares it, it requires more discussion. Uh, we have had for decades folks from the west end of the city talk to us, whether um, happy or angrily, mm-hmm. about their feeling of disconnect from the rest of the city, whether it's Delray or Old Town. And if you're moving um, from west to east, we have only so many ways to do that. Yeah. And so we need to understand that that is, um, that is a, a hurdle for us um, in terms of transit and uh, transportation and moving people. And so we need to have a real thought out discussion and really come up with how do we want this to look in 25 or 50 years. Okay. Um, so, yeah. All right, so um, I'm going to move us a little rapidly sure. through the next one. Um, mm-hmm. You said something, and it just it's escaped me right now. Uh, around uh, probably around process and feedback, mm-hmm. the stormwater issues mm, that have yes. really plagued the city. Mm-hmm. Now I know what it was. You said that in talking to people, you found that the seminary road issue was not an issue for everybody. Mm-hmm. It was more of a concentrated. Have you found that with a stormwater issue, or is that something that is that's, is that's, really at the top of the? That's a big one. I yeah. think everybody, um, you know, Old Town, it's always been around uh, co- more or more or less coastal flooding, mm-hmm. um, and so um, other parts of Rosemont, parts of Delray, frankly, parts of Taylor, Taylor Run, where I live at, um, have flooding issues and have okay. had flooding issues, and so you know the. Um, the investment that we need to make, um, the conversations that we need to have, and the advocacy um, in working with our constituents um, and residents here in the city that we need to have, that push is happening. Uh, that push is happening now. Um, and what I've been doing and talking to people on the doors is talking about what we're actually doing, talk about the investments we've made, um, you know, the advisory group that we've stood up. Um, I'm proud. We, I was looking through my emails uh, today. We have our first advisory uh, meeting on June 10th. 
Okay. Uh, and we have a good group of residents with um, with professional knowledge as well as, frankly, folks who have just been advocates um, for how do we get this done um, and how do we get it done quickly? Uh, because I think everybody understands that we need to get it done. The problem is, you know, looking at a 10 year life cycle for some of these projects or or later um, does not work. Um, okay. And so, so finding doing, the funding. So, well, mm -hmm. there we go. So <laughs> would you be an advocate for taking part of the American Rescue oh, Plan? I, I've already talked about that at, at council meetings okay. um, and, and been very vocal. I think I was, might have been the first one. But everybody's going to agree to that because we know that's the that's big the need around the city. Um, there are... Um, very limited places in the western end of the city that are hit by um, flooding, and so this is more an eastern mm -hmm. um, one, but I uh, issue. Uh, but I do think everybody understands, um, and, and a couple of the candidates already, you know, have said it uh, on previous shows, that fear that you have about rain. Yeah. Like I've had my basement flooded a couple <laughs> of times, and during, and so I actually own the house uh, that my mom first bought. Um, and she used to have real flooding issues. And so anytime it rained, we'd run and go check the basement. That's not something, that's not a, a, an activity any homeowner wants to have to do on a no. regular basis. And so finding real solutions and taking care of this issue is, is key uh, for, I think, any candidate uh, for city council this next term. Well, you know, I live on Howell Avenue and with a basement in marine clay. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. fortunate, I mean, we were fortunate enough to be able to put in French drains uh -huh, after yeah. going through yeah. five or six of these. Right. But not everybody can do that. Right. So, and it takes, it's an economic and an emotional toll. It absolutely is. It absolutely is. And, I and think, to be to be uh, out of town and there's a storm oh coming, my you're, you're just like, oh my gosh. I mean, I can definitely count the number of times I've run from work. Um, 15, 20, 30 minutes away <laughs> just to check my basement. Yeah. Um, and relief that I've felt many times when it's been fine, but also the, those couple of times when, hey, boss, I can't come back to work. I need to figure out what's going on in my house. Yeah, um, yeah that's just definitely not the feeling that we need yeah, to it's, allow to continue. It's, um, it's a really tough one. Um, let's, do, let's do the co-housing very quickly. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, co-housing on school property. So, uh, th I think the is issue really came up the first time I remember it was, I was talking um, uh, with some folks online about teacher housing. Um, mm -hmm. Because I think, you know, for me, uh, having been on council this many terms, I, I'm trying to really look far into the future and set ourselves up, you know, 20, 30, 40, mm -hmm. 50 years down the line. And I'm very worried that um, the about the sustainability of, of wages, of teacher wages, employee wages. And so what are the other benefits that we can look at as a city where, that we can invest in now to be able to pay dividends for staff in the future, whether those, um, those folks for, for schools would be employees, such as teachers. Mm -hmm. um, what are those other things? Is it education? Is it better benefits? Um, what is it? So housing has come into that mindset. You know, we have land. Uh, very limited opportunities, um, but where can we do, can we do housing on a school next to a school somewhere in the community? How do we do that? Um, because in the future, are we going to be able to increase revenues and taxes right. uh, to that extent? Um, and uh, unfortunately, the issue has become you know a political football that people can throw around and right. and and, and, um, and make an issue and whatnot. And, and uh, I give them credit for doing that, but. The real work, as folks will see when they get on council, is to have that forethought um, to what what things we can start to do now so mm -hmm. that they pay dividends later for folks. Um, that's what council members before me have done uh, so that we get to a place where we are now. And that's what council members now need to do to look into that future and say, how can we look and think creatively so that we are setting ourselves up for the best, um, for, for a, a for opportunities in, in the future. And I'm not talking years, I'm talking decades. Right. I, I, somebody made the point, too, that it's it may not be something you ever do, right. but it's worth asking the question oh, because absolutely. it can open up other avenues yes. of thought. That's right. So rather just than being a yes or no, That's black right. or white, let's look at the gray. 
and uh, as I was as I was watching the other interviews, um, the example you gave sticks in my mind every time I walk into the police station. It does because it's an amazing who, building. Do you know who made? I, I swear it was somebody who came to a DRCA meeting. Yeah. I don't know if it was the police chief at the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was. Uh, it was definitely one of the elected officials, and I think was it, it was. Was it? Um, I think it Rod been, Krupika. I think it was Rob. Um, Rob, Rob. Who, yeah. And I, that just really stuck with mm-hmm. me. That and it made perfect sense. Yes. That why would you build? With city money, yes. a single-use yes. building. And you know, the thing that I, I, I'll be honest with you, what I hate to see, um, I hate to get a building awards. I really do. Anytime we get a building award, whether it's for a school or municipal building, because it's not about the quality of the architecture, it's mm-hmm. about the function of these buildings. Um, you know, if there's a ward, an award system for function in buildings, that's what I want to get because yeah. that means we are doing the best with every piece of land that we can, we, mm-hmm. with taxpayer dollars that we can. Um, and that's, you know, I haven't found that award, uh, <laughs> that award system yet, but that's, that's, you know, your, your example hits on that so beautifully because you go in there, you've got high ceilings with nothing up top, uh, a couple of offices there, but there's so much unused space, mm-hmm. um, that, yeah, we can't we can't build like that um, and expect it to be sustainable and expect our taxpayers to think that we're using um, their tax dollars to the highest and greatest use. And I also think that we forget. I know this always amazed me when I went to New York. Mm-hmm. We forget that people don't work simply nine to five. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people who work twelve to six, mm-hmm. and so. We have buildings that are not being used for That's long right. stretches of time, right. but could be used oh, yeah. by the people who aren't on a nine to five right. job, That's right? right. That's right. Where in, in New York, for instance, they know that. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, so they never sleeps. And they, right. they, it never sleeps. And there's always somebody mm-hmm. somewhere, you know, working out or yeah. whatever it may be. And so I think that's a way to look at it too. Oh, is, it is. I mean, one of the one of the uh, interesting nicknames I've picked up over the years is the Night Mayor, uh, if you haven't heard that. And, no, uh, I haven't. Yeah, the Mayor of the Night. Um, but it is that concept that our city does not shut down at a you know at an eight o'clock mm-hmm. time point or at seven o'clock. You know we have activities, we have people working, people that need services well into the night. Yeah. Um, because, yeah. like you said, their schedule is different, their lifestyle is different, and so a city like ours needs to be able to understand that and support that. Um, and so you're absolutely right. But I do think that that is something. That businesses have learned to a degree with the, with the pandemic. Oh, yeah. That yeah. you can work from anywhere. That's right. And you can work any time of the day. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I mean, I um, I remember, uh, and I can't remember the name of the project, but um, right before the pandemic, several, several months um, before, um, actually, I'm, I'm messing up my time lot time slot um, or timeline here. Um, there was a project over on the western part of the city um, that was an approved uh, adaptive reuse of an office building where a developer came in and said, hey, I want this, want to try this neat idea where people can work from home. And it was just like, I, I drove past the building the other day and I was like, oh my gosh, I bet, you know, they made out like bandits because this was the exact thing mm-hmm. that was needed. It was a way to, a new way to think. Um, unfortunately, it it was, uh, the idea has been pushed because of the pandemic, but um, the idea where you work from home and you have a, a different lifestyle than just going to the office and yep. coming back home and living the rest of your life um, is, is something that we need to be flexible about in the city. Yeah, yeah. I, it makes sense. Yeah. It just makes a lot Absolutely. of sense. Absolutely. So, David, do we have any questions? We do. Oh, All good. Right. I love questions. All right. Oh, this is a good one. If you were not already a councilman here in Alexandria, what would be your top two issues as a regular tax-paying community member? (laughs) So um, if I was not a councilman, one of the things that uh, folks may already know about me um, is I love black history. Yeah, Um, I know. And so, you know, the the idea, and and I think this is one that I have an idea and a topic I've loved since I was little. Um, and the fact that we are a historic city, but 
you know, for the, you know, prior to the past five years, we weren't telling the, the whole story. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be one of, you know, one of my issues just as a, you know, as an individual, as a person. Um, I know it's not a big, uh, big on the city list, but, you know, that's big in, in my my perspective and my story. Um you know, secondly, it's really education. Education, I think, uh, unlocks so many opportunities for people. And so we need to ensure that every student that comes through the city is well-educated and well-qualified to, to fight and compete for the jobs of the future. I think we do our children a huge disservice um, when we don't ensure that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so grateful for the, the community of educators and people that care about kids in the city. Um, but we all know uh, we always can do more because we don't want any child to slap, slip through those cracks. Um, and education has meant a lot to me uh, in my life and in the, the lives of others that I've seen uh, do some amazing things in this city and others. Um, and so I think that would be kind of my next biggest thing and uh, one of my passions as well. Great. I love that. Um, regarding youth issues, will you commit to creating a youth task force or advisory board so more young people mm. have a voice in the system? So I've been trying to do that for the last um, two or three years. So whoever that is, please reach out to me. I definitely want to get that um, that rolling. You know, we have a, a youth council uh, that meets regularly, mm-hmm. um, and I've been pushing staff to elevate the conversations around them so people know about them and can support the work that they do and the youth that are involved in that. Um, I've also talked, um, and I'm starting to be the older member of council because we have a number of uh, younger folks here but on council now, um, but there has been talk about having um, kind of a young adults task force as well mm, okay. to talk about um uh, to talk about issues and concerns, you know, around affordability and, um, you know, like we were talking about um, what happens when, you know, the sun goes down and what, right. what's available for folks uh, here. Um, and so issues um, around the different age groups, I think it's something that we need to do. Um, we need to have groups of, of residents thinking um, and creating ideas uh, for how to live in the city at every age. Um, so that's definitely a great idea. That's I appreciate that because I, I think about that. How do yeah. I continue to live in the city? That's right. That's know? right. And I think you know the 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 fact that affordability runs through all of those groups mm-hmm. is something that I think um, everybody wants to talk about um, and everybody wants to find solutions for. Um, you know. Me, how do I live here in the city? How do I how do I make sure my mom ages in the city? Um, how do I make sure my son has a, you know, a place here in the city as he grows up? Like that's a, that is a real issue for people, yeah. uh, and I think we need to do more as local government to talk about the ideas and the solutions um, for for making people feel comfortable um, aging here in the city. Good. Yeah. Well, John, we're kind of coming to the end of our time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. I'm just really so grateful that you decided to come and talk to us. Absolutely. Is there anything you would like to say as we um, close out tonight? Sure. Um, you know, uh, to the folks here and watching this show, first, thank you. Um, I'm trying to get the right camera pull. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> right there is no good. <laughs> um, to the folks watching, um, thank you for watching. Um, I think most folks have heard about my passion for the city. Um hopefully learned a little bit about my experience here. Uh, I do ask for your support. Um, I I, uh, understand that I'll be the longest serving member on city council now. So uh, if I'm, if I'm reelected, like Um, that. And so, you know, we need experience on council coming out of um, this pandemic. Um, I don't say that. I I know it's going to sound politically motivated, but it's, I think it's real. Um, Anybody, any body of elected officials, you want uh, a level of, um, of understanding uh, and experience there. Um, and so uh, I really ask for your support. Um, I know it's easy to, to look at um, new energy and what that can bring, but that new energy needs to be balanced with um, experience. Um, it was great for me to be the new energy at one, one um, time on city council, um, but it was always good to have that balance um, with an, an older, more experienced council mm-hmm. member. Um, to talk about ideas, talk about 
frankly, the past of the city and where we've come from. Uh, and I think that's going to be needed on this next council as well. So I hope to get folks support on June 8th or earlier if you're early voting. Um, but thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank and thank you, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Uh, I'm just learning so much um, from all of our candidates. Um, and it's evident how everyone is concerned about this city, loves it, and wants the very best for it. So I hope you will join us again tomorrow night when we will be talking to Kevin Harris at 8.30. As always, thank you to our producer, David McClure, and to Mary Wadlin of the Zebra Press for giving us this opportunity. We'll see you again tomorrow night.